Hey there guys and gals, if is everyone backwards here, back with yet another 100% achievement slash trophy guide, and this is for the Count Lucanor. Lucanor? Lucanor? Uh, however you pronounce it from where you're from, anyway. Uh, um, this game was developed by Baroque Decay, published by Merge Games, and is available to you for just £9.99 in the UK, or £14.99 in the US. Although it does go on sale often, so of course be sure to keep an eye out. Now a few quick things before we start. Now originally, because this game came out in 2018, I wasn't going to do a guide, but honestly I enjoyed it that much that I absolutely just had to. Also, let me know in the comments section below if my new logo in the bottom left hand corner is either okay for you, or if it's a bit too much of a distraction. You know, always wanting to improve things for those who watch, so any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Um, another thing I highly recommend going into the options menu and turning the gamma all the way up. With the brightness up you can see better in the darker areas around you, which is a lot handy in this game, I can tell you that. I only figured it out halfway through the game, which just sucks for me. Um, as for achievements, they are easy enough, but we need to click on certain items, collect certain things, do the five endings, which again are all easy enough if you are following the video. There are only a few slightly sticky spots in the game, but again, easy enough. So then, uh, let's begin, and the first thing we have to do after the introduction with your mother, go back into the house and get the bread, and that will unlock our first achievement then. So, very, very easy that one. So, the, the first bit of introduction then, that's all automatic, as you are probably aware. Go ahead and get the bone on the right hand side, now we've got to go ahead and feed that to our dog. I don't actually think we can leave the first scene without it. And basically, so throughout the game then there'll be a lot of times you're going to need items and the way to do that then is you press the Y button, go to the item you want to equip and obviously press the A button or the X if you're on the PlayStation of course. And again, so you can't just give things automatically, you've actually got to have the item in hand. So you either press the white button to do that, or you can click the right trigger or right bumper button, and in the bottom right corner, that's where the item you need will be displayed. So instead of going straight up, then we'll just go round down to the bottom sort of area of the house. There's going to be a treasure chest we open for achievement number two. All's well that starts well, isn't it? So then, now we've got our first candle, and these candles are basically going to be your best friend throughout the entire game, because, well, you know, dark areas and such. Um, in terms of sort of monsters to the game, they don't come till a bit later on. Um, you don't do any sort of combat or anything, all you do is basically just avoid, so, you know, it's, it's not too bad. These areas are, again, very easy enough. And this is where we begin the true part of the game then. Lovely little imagery for the Count Lucinor, Lacanor, whatever you want to call it. And in terms of saves, uh, you actually have to pay a raven one gold coin to save the game. It doesn't do it automatically. So before you walk past this old person with a pig, um, go and give the old woman the cane. And as it turns out then, she actually beats the crap out of her pig, which is just, just wrong. Peter will be all over that. I mean, P-E-T-A, not any random guy's name, Peter. Ah, oh, come on. Don't beat the... If you want to beat anything, beat the monkey. <laughs> that means two things. <laughs> anyway, once you give the old lady the cane, she beats the pig. Now we can move on. Uh, another... Um, and just before we go off to the right, go up to the... Uh, go up past the rock, up north right here. And we will see um, a little friend. We're going to make her our little our little bitch later on. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking. She's not going to be a little bitch, but she um, will be sort of working with her later on. And that is for another achievement. So we've already got three in the first five minutes, which is always handy. So once you're done, go back down, pass the rock, and continue on to the right. And as I was saying, sadly, this guy doesn't sprint. They can be monsters and they can be all types of crap running after you, but this guy decides it's just a lovely little stroll wherever you go. 
Now, in some circumstances, that can be great, but not when you're being chased down. So you see this donkey right here? We are going to be needing him in just a little bit. We're going to be needing to feed him some apples. So go past him and up towards his field here to find said apples. And, of course, it's just uh, the A button then to pick him up. Um, now, if you see me doing random things throughout the game, do the exact same as I do on screen, such as giving the old lady the cane to beat her pig. I know it might look a little bit pointless, but that everything I do will normally come for the story or an achievement later on. So just do exactly what I do here. So get out the menu then with the Y button, equip an apple, make sure not to eat it, equip it, um, give the donkey an apple, and that will be yet another achievement. And we'll need, we'll need to be feeding this donkey another two times during the game. So any apples you find, and we should find enough if you are following the video, again, make sure to keep them. Don't stick them anywhere else, in your mouth or wherever. And just continue on forward. Now this merchant right here, he's a, uh, how to put it bluntly, he's a, he's a dick. So what we need to do then, equip a gold coin and give him one of the gold coins. It should be fine because he'll give you two coins back later on. So we're not really losing anything but as long as you've got only one gold coin remaining uh, you're on the right track basically so move forward push this box out of the way don't worry about this goat for now he'll be he'll be well I'm pretty sure he's there throughout the game so uh, we don't need him anyway so just continue forward and then on the right hand side coming up we will be talking to a shepherd now in terms of dialogue like I said I probably if I were you I'd Take your time through the dialogue, because the story and the gameplay is actually very, very interesting. Uh, the farmer here wants some cheese, so just give him some cheese. But yeah, I'm obviously just blasting straight through the dialogue, you know, just for time and things like that. But I honestly would, because the game and the story, like I said, is very interesting, it's worth just reading out all the dialogue anyway. But here's another achievement for us to get, and the achievements just keep on coming, and that is just gravy. And this is where now the true, the, the really true point of the story now begins. We're in the dark. We are basically going to crap our pants for the majority of the game now. Okay, so this now is the point where... Um, there's not, there's only really one enemy. We, we, we'll be going for another achievement right here, but there's basically one enemy, sort of, the devil's spawn of Satan goat. Don't worry about these goats, these dancing goats right here. Um, we have no idea, Hans has no idea what's happening, but there are devil, demon spawn, dancing goats. But you can just ignore them for now and just keep following the path. Now, this guy is a major player in the game. What he'll want us to do is just follow him so just for this little bit go ahead follow him just go past all the boxes here keep going left once Hans turns around and thinks what's that basically there's a demon goat you just don't go to the right because you'll die and just keep on going to the left so push the top box out of the way there then and then go down push the next little box out of the way and you can then get through and then just keep going to the left. Like I said, with the darkness, if it's quite dark, like I said, go into your options menu, turn your gamma, your brightness, all the way up to full, and you'll see just a little bit better, making it a little bit easier for you. So when you get to this next area then, the kobold is what his name is, he will go up north. Do not follow him. Keep going and following the path. Basically what we'll be doing is finding our house again, so we'll need to be going all the way down south. And what I advise is to sort of stick to more the right side of the path, as you see me doing here. Basically the, um, a demon goat's going to come and try and eat you, but he'll come up on the left hand side. So. Try and stick with this sort of right-hand side of the path, and there he is, look, so <laughs> that's why it's easier to do that. So just keep doing that, and then keep going, and you'll eventually just get to the next area. Go down and see your house, and that is for yet another achievement. 
coming thick and fast, coming at you like thick and fast stuff. Um, yeah, what he does, if you press A with the candle in your hand, he'll actually place a candle, which again comes in handy later on. For some reason, I got lost in the middle of nowhere, but just follow down and you'll see a house for another achievement. So instead of going all the way back up, then it's just easier to go into load saw, which is your load save zero graveyard. This is where we started. So now we'll be doing the exact same route that we did, but we will actually be following the kobold this time. And of course, always remember then to <laughs> equip your candle because, boy, you are going to get fudged up in the dark. Either by this bloody pool of bloody death ducks or goat dancing demon spawn Satan goats dancing. And you will uh, familiar, familiarize yourself with this area because this is where we've seen our little friend who ran away earlier on uh, just past the rock. So a little bit of dialogue will happen here. Nothing, nothing too untoward is going to happen. For some reason, uh, I kept forgetting my candle in the extremely early part of the game. Um, but like I said, you know, with the dialogue, it's definitely worth just taking your time through and actually reading what's going on because it is, once I said, it is very interesting. Now, welcome to the fountain, the courtyard. This is basically where we'll be at sort of the majority of the game, going in and out between the sort of north, east, south and west sort of rooms. So for this first bit then what we'll do is go ahead and talk to the merchant again, the one who stole two coins off you a little bit earlier on. And he will give you the blue key. So now we can go through blue doors. There you go, makes sense doesn't it? And there are some items we can buy, we'll only really be needing the letter for now, the other two we'll come back for quite a bit later on. But now we will make our first save, so equip your coin, give it to the raven, and this is where we will save a game. And we'll be saving our game every sort of 5 to 10 minutes of actual gameplay, so... It's it's definitely worth not just... Uh, and you'll obviously get another, another achievement here as well, but it's definitely not worth just keep saving every minute or two just in case. Because you'll end up running out of coins and you'll end up messing up your game anyway. So from there then, now we can head north and we will follow the co bold co bold again, co bold bold man, bold co. And so, the main premise of the game now is to figure out what this guy's name is, and we will do that by uh, collecting letters all throughout the castle and coming back to this room later on to spell his name out and move on to more towards the end of the game. But this is basically the main premise of the story, so we'll be going in, out, all about, just to find this, 
these guys' letters. So from that room then, uh, go directly to the left. Don't go out of this main area yet. Um, and up through this door. I'm saying um because you think he can sprint or run a little bit faster, but he can't. Now watch out for spikes in this room. This is the first room with anything really of interest that can kill you. So you'll have to be, you know, quite careful. I mean, that they are obvious. That you know, there's nothing that's uh, going to trap you or anything. So just take your time going around this room. You see little blood spatters on the floor, and again, like I said, worth turning your gamma, your brightness, all the way up. So you have an easier time of it again. So there's going to be a little treasure chest for us to sink our teeth into. I was going to say genitals for some reason, but I had a rough night's sleep. Anyway, and then from the left here is where we will find the first letter. And now with that then we can just head on out of the room. Once you exit out of the last room then, keep going straight at this point, we're going to be entering another door and we'll have to push a few boxes out of the way, kind of like a tiny, small, little puzzle. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened there, he decided to sprint to the door. Apparently he shit himself, thought there was something behind him. But anyway, just uh, push the exact same boxes I do here, so the one in the middle, just push this all the way to the left, then push the, uh, the top one all the way, well not all the way up, but enough so you can get by. Push this one up just a little bit as well, again, just so you can get by. And, by the way, I think at this point, there's going to be a few sound issues. So, yes, yeah, some of the sound won't actually <laughs> correlate with what's being shown in the gameplay. I don't know what happened, the game lag. The game can do that, it can glitch, and it can be a bit laggy. So... You know, like I said, it makes no difference. You're still doing exactly the same thing that you're doing on screen anyway. So go ahead then, push these little boxes out of the way. Our main objective here is to get to the lever right there, or lever, depending on where you're from again, just to push this down. And go ahead and do that. Lovely, jubbly. And now what we can do then, that opens up a new pathway for us, which can get us another letter. Don't leave this room just yet, go off to the right, we're going to find another chest for us to sink our... Again, I keep going to say genitalia, and I don't know why, that's just weird. I... Teeth, sink our teeth into. And you notice those little notes from JF? Well, this is why we'll be getting quite a few of the chests as well, because that comes in handy for another achievement later on as well. So it's obviously always worth just double checking every chest for items and of course for these notes from JF which will come quite a bit later in the game. Now go to the right, go down and we will meet our friend who ran away from us early if you remember up by the rock. So there we go then, we know her name is Julia, or Giulia, or Giulia, I, yeah, pff, I don't know, I'm going to call her Giulia, or Ghoulies, because that's funny, and funny's good. Anyway, equip the candle, go off to the left, and oh, hey, look who it is, remember the old woman who beat her pig? Well, the pig is now a human in this um, alternate, weird reality that we found ourselves into, so... Eisbar or Ibazan, I forget his name, but anyway, he's a human pig now. So go and talk to the old woman anyway. And basically, we're going to get an item from her the green key. 
and a snake ring which comes in handy for another achievement later on as well and basically what that snake ring does is when you put it on it shows up things that are false so like <laughs> oh that pig is one smelly little son of a bitch uh, um, anyway good good weird stuff going on sorry go up to the south first then and we'll be heading to the right and yeah, sorry, as I was saying, with that snake ring then, you can then see what are sort of fake chests and what are just basically things that are fake throughout the game. So we're back in the same room we were just a little bit earlier on. We'll have to push the same boxes to get out of the way then. Sorry, I'm still creasing over that human pig guy farting and eating corn off the floor. <laughs> top stuff. This is top notch quality right here. So to the right where the chest was, this is a room we couldn't enter before, but now we have a blue and a green key. Um, now we can go ahead and use that blue key on this door. So we've got another little area for us to enter. Now, this fire room right here, don't worry about the, you'll get another achievement for another way. And don't worry about the demon bloody goat spawning death demon Satan goat there. Just go ahead, take your time through the fire and go ahead and get this chest to get a couple of gold coins now this fire puzzle isn't too bad at all really it's it, i mean it's pretty obvious when you sort of have to move when the f when the flame dies down just go ahead and move it's pretty easy but we'll be going into a slightly more complicated one in just a touch but for now we can exit this room and head out of this main room all you got to do is just push one box here, and away we go. Now we can exit this main area, and we will be making yet another save. So yeah, as you can probably hear, the audio was a little bit behind it. It just thought I was still in the fire room for some reason. That will sort itself out in just a bit. But for now, we are going to head to the right to uh, remember to, to equip your candle as always. And this is the first time we'll be entering this uh, main area. So to the right, top right corner then, there is another door we're going to be entering. And this is the fire room then. This isn't too bad you might take a little bit of damage here but you know it's not going to be so bad when you've got uh there's going to be quite a few things to eat and regain health quite a lot throughout the entirety of the game so this fire bit then obviously as soon as the first one dies down you can move across wait until these two die down and then go ahead and get there this one isn't again it's not too bad um, make sure to go all the way to the left here. I would recommend waiting a little bit because you can actually be um, messed up as I do here. The timing on this can be a little bit tricky, but you know, it shouldn't be. Again, it's not too bad. Honestly, it's not too bad, even if you do lose just a little bit of health. But this is where we're getting another achievement then. And this is for getting this chest without using any water. So we're going to die, but that's fine because we haven't long just made a save. So that'll be no problem. So wait for this first flame in front of you to die down. And then just go ahead and continuously mash the A or X button if you're on PlayStation, of course. Like, right now. Mash it now, and you should just be able to sneak it before you die. And then just press continue when you do die. So we'll be going back to that fire room a little bit later on, but for now, head down towards uh, the north, equip a candle, and we're going to see our little donkey friend from the first one. Remember we fed him an apple in the at the very beginning of the game? Well, what you need to do now, very important, this is very important, this bit, place another two candles just around him. Make sure there's at least three, maybe four candles. Three should do the trick, though. And equip your apple and give it to the donkey. 
not only will he enjoy it, he will also, um, well, he's also going to crap gold. <laughs> I, I shit you not, I don't know why, <laughs> but he's, <laughs> the donkey poops gold, and we can pick it up, because it's worth currency, apparently. Donkey poop is worth currency, so, hey. I'm happy with that. But yeah, like I said, very important to put these three cannons around him because if you don't, monsters will actually eat him and we won't be able to get him for an achievement at the end of the game. So very important to put three cannons around him there. So anyway, once you're done having a look at unicorn donkey gold poop, head to the room to the left of the donkey. I, don't, I just thought, I mean, it's very clever. It's very funny. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway. Turn these levers each once, and that will open up a door for us on the right, and that will grab us a bucket, which we will need, and a chest for us to have a look in as well, for another note of Juff. Oh, sorry, there's no note from Juff in that one. Uh, but you, you get two gold coins anyway. And it's a treasure chest on the right here. Get that apple. Oh, there's, sorry, there was a letter from Juff in that one. My name Kiev. Anyway, go back to the levers. Press the middle ones only once, and there are two doors, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the left is locked, the one on the right opens, and that gets us another letter. So if you thought you had it easy up to this point, well, it all changes now because apparently it's 3 a.m. and the monsters only come out at 3 a.m. So that is what we'll be facing with from now on. Go ahead, get your bucket out and get some water from the fountain right there. Equip your candle. Um, the pig's just naked and drinking water next to the raven for some reason because why the hell not? <laughs> Go back into the main area on the right and what we'll be doing is going back up to the fire room this time. So. We're basically doing what we did before, only this time we're using the water to get the letter. Um, <laughs> you need the candle because even though this is a fire room, you still can't see, apparently. Anyway, so just do exactly the same thing as last time. Make sure to grab the chest, get a couple of gold coins again, and another letter from Jeff. And just keep doing what we do, or what we did last time. Except try not to get hit if you can. Should have taken my own advice really there. So for that last bit, it's definitely worth waiting at least until the flames start going up at least three times. So this time then we're not going for the chest. You just head on straight up, wait for the flames on the right to die down. And now we can place our bucket of water and that will extinguish all of these flames right here, which, well, you know what? It does come in handy. It does. Like I said, with, with the, um, a little bit of lack of health there, that's not going to be too much of an issue. Get your candle out again, by the way. Because, like I said, we'll be getting loads of food, bread and apple, well, j j all types of food for us to regain our health with a bit later on. So once you've got the kobolds letter then, get some cheese now from the top right chest and we'll be making another save soon. Go to the left, push these barrels out of the way. Obviously, make sure to wait until the flame on the right has died down. And now just push that one and quickly go under this little crawl space right here and head back outside to make yet another save.
could honestly watch that pig drink water and eat corn all day. That human pig weird thing. <laughs> honestly, simple mind, see? Please is simple minds. Anyway, go into the left area for the very first time. Go up and to the left, and we would um, we go to see Guliana, Gulia, Gulies, big Julies, for our next time. She's not going to be as scared to see us this time, which is great. So a little bit of conversation is going to happen with her, and we're going to be doing a little bit of um, a little bit of sort of. Oh, <laughs> okay, sorry, I, I lied. She does crap her pants again. Hilarious. But this time we'll be sort of um, placing our candles a little bit just to stave off some monsters here. So you talk to her, job done, go to the left and go up. This can be a little bit of a maze. Now you see the little spikes on the wall, you've got to be very careful with them. Don't get too close to the wall, otherwise, like I said, it's a trap, they will spike you. So, you know, be very, very careful. Place a candle right here so no monsters can get you. So yeah, just take your time, you know, I'm sort of rushing through it in a way, get a wooden plank on the left there, but you know, there's no need to rush and sort of take unnecessary damage if you can help it. So this area is sort of like a little maze, go ahead, pick up your candle here, don't know if there's any monsters in this room, but um, you know, it's a just in case thing. So you'll see where the blood spatters are, you'll sort of know where to maneuver yourself, uh, go to the side to grab a chest right here. Uh, get another gold coin, but yeah, you see where the blood spatters are, that's where, obviously the place without the blood spatter, that's where you'll know sort of where to walk and where to manoeuvre yourself, so, uh, again, take your time, just follow me best as you can, this is kind of like a little maze, we'll need to be going to um, grab a lever here, so walk over this beautiful looking dead bodied skeleton, again, take your time, just follow me. Now for these next little bit of spices, these ones can be quite tricky, you have to manoeuvre yourself very, very carefully, so there's one on the left and one on the top, so if you think you're good, just sort of get in the middle of the two of them, and you should be okay. Again, if you do take a hit off them, it's not too bad, of course we can regain our health with a bit of food a little bit later on, but if you take too much damage, it might be worth just reloading your last save point and going again. Uh, again, another couple of sets of difficult traps there, but it shouldn't be too bad for you to get through. Go to the right, go all the way up to find yet another chest. Uh, we've got another bit of portion of bread. Again, will come in handy when we need our health a little bit later on. Now go down, avoiding the traps right here. I think there's about uh, five or six on this point, so take your time. Be careful. Please, for the love of God. We have yet another letter. Now, we are starting to fly through these letters. Uh, go ahead, push the lever so we can now exit this room and go back into the courtyard. Uh, but yeah, we are starting to fly through the letters now. Um, like I said, the main sort of premise of the gameplay is only about an hour and 15, an hour and 20 minutes long on this video. The rest is sort of getting the five endings, which is no, uh, not too bad. So we are flying through it now. Um, remember the shepherd earlier? The one who gave you wine and you gave him some cheese? Yes, he's now just ahead with two demon spawn goats dancing around him. So <laughs> fantastic, more extra drama. So go up and then head immediately to the left to one of the first rooms we entered earlier on. Do one with the spike traps. We're going to be entering a door that we couldn't earlier on. Yay, more fun things. So go directly to the left this time. 
Um, and that is what we will need, so get out your wooden plank, get out your morning wood. Um, <laughs> I'm funny. Uh, equip your candle, because you can't see, obviously, and that will get us another chest. A couple of gold coins and another note from GF. And this time it's a very important clue, so, you know, it all helps. Plus another achievement as well, so, you know, we hadn't had one for a while, but now we're back into it. Excellent day. And now with this one, then we can actually just exit the room. So go ahead and talk to the beautiful looking bloody demon head that is the <laughs> shepherd who has lost his mind as well as his body. Uh, yeah, go ahead and talk to him and he'll give you another key, the red key this time, so you can go through red doors and go ahead and make another save. Oh, plus the crowbar, of course, which, you know, all these items, are they all come in handy for achievements and story-related gameplay earlier on. So everyone I talk to and everything I do, there's always a reason to do it. So, of course, you always gotta make sure to be following me. So from this point then, equip your candle, we're going to be heading to the left and we're going to be encountering our first monster. Now like I said, you can't fight back or anything, but what they tried to do is they tried to sort of suck you in with this red laser power looking thing. So uh, you can escape it, all you got to do is just keep pressing in the opposite direction of wherever they are sucking you in from. But there was a monster just there. You've got to wait for him to nip back out. Go up to the door into the library. 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 And now head back out. The monster shouldn't be there. Equip your crowbar and go into the grate very quickly to the left of it before the monster comes back. Equip your candle. We are into a little crawl space. And we're going to be finding or coming up against another big boy monster. Now this guy can actually kill you in one hit. Make sure, of course, you go to the left to get a chest and some another two gold coins. But yeah, this this the Carl the Caramel Lengo, the Caramel Lengo, the Carmichael. Just get your crowbar out. You, you'll see. You'll see exactly what I mean now. Equip your candle once again. Now this bit, you just got to do a bit of waiting. So this guy right here, he can't come up to the area you're in, but he will. Um, sort of come up so make sure but he'll basically kill you in one hit so you've got to be very careful very patient and you need to wait until he goes to the very left to some bookcases like right now and then go ahead uh, go to the table on the right to get a couple of portions of bread again place a candle and then immediately crawl under the table a caramelengo sorry that's the one the red caramelengo but I like calling him caramel lengo because Everybody likes caramel. I mean, this dude is dressed unbelievably. He is part of the Spa he is the Spanish Inquisition. He is part of the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Legendary. I tell you, what, the, the guys, the guys who wrote this game, honestly, are just fantastic. With the pooping gold unicorn and the beautifully dressed enemy. Anyway, once he goes back to the left, go up. And we need to push this box out of the way, and you need to sort of get into this little crawl space here. Remain in the crawl space for now. Now what we have to do is wait for the Caramel Lengo to open up the chest. And as soon as he opens up the chest, then we have to ring the clock so we can grab whatever's inside, and then we can leg it out of there. So he's opened it now. Go grab the clock. Go back the way you came, because of course he's going to come the obvious way. So you've got to be quick. No point in messing around. Grab your candle on the way out as well, if you want to. It's just not too bad. But I actually almost messed it up there. He's just about coming on his way back. But, yeah, that's not too bad of an area. But, again, if you do get caught, you will die in one hit, which would suck bows. So at this point then, now we are heading back outside, but we, we are going directly straight past the fountain, straight past all the old people and the demon goats and 
bobbling heads. And we're just going straight to the right hand side of life now. And we're going into a room that we haven't been yet. So go down this time and to the right to find another door. We'll, uh, you'll find another chest in there. But what we'll need to do, go to the back of the room first. Uh, get your ladder out, which we got a little bit earlier on from the library. <laughs> Sorry, I, can, I don't know why people say library, but that's just everything's funny to me. Equip your candle, go up, pull this lever right here, and there is also a chest on the right. Make sure to grab that before you head back down. Another letter from Giev. And then in this, you should, this looks familiar by now. This is yet another of the kobold letters names. Names, letters. So that room's very easy, and you can hear all this whispering and stuff, and it sounds, it's, you know, fantastic, very um, intense, and it sort of keeps you on edge, and, you know, it's just absolutely brilliant. So we'll be coming up to yet another achievement here, and this involves putting our snake ring on. Um, obviously, don't do it here, but you'll have to do it just outside the door. You've got to put the snake ring on before you enter this door. So on the room to the left, at the bottom left corner, now, make sure to put on your snake ring right now, and basically that is just where you'll get another achievement then. And basically there's a whole bunch of treasure chests, a lot of them are fake, a lot of them are booby trapped, but this is where you get this achievement right here. So we'll be, um, there's only a couple of real chests we'll need to grab in here. So of course, make sure to equip a camel first, because you can't see. <laughs> And the first real chest we'll be doing, uh, cl uh, not climb under this table, go under this table to the very left. And it's on the very, very left, basically the second chest that you see there on the very, very left. That is a kobold's letter's name, yet another one. Um, don't click these chests right here, but you can click these sort of chest drawers with um, plates and things on them. And you'll get a sort of apple, bit of bread, a couple of other items. And there's going to be one more chest, one more real chest. We can grab and that's on the very, very top right-hand corner right here. Apologies there. Uh, apparently my gameplay, that's not my editing skills. Apparently the gameplay just messed up. But you just go back under the table from the middle of the room. And the red car caramel lingo is right back here. Now, what he's basically going to do, he knows where you are. So he's going to try and follow you everywhere. I sort of tried going to the left and I thought, oh, I'm going to try going to the right. But... You sort of got to kind of trap him just in the middle of the table. And what I did was ended up trapping in the middle of the table and then sort of moving all the way to the right. As you can see here, I'm not sure that there's any sort of any good particular way to do this. Or any, you know, foolproof given way to do this. Um, I literally just get him looking up here, making sure he's at the right and then just sort of going all the way around to the right. There's only one way to do this, and it's to be a brave, big balls boy or girl about it. <laughs> I'm afraid. Yeah, so hopefully then, guys, that wasn't too bad for you. You shouldn't be, like I said, as long as you get him into the middle of the table, you can then sort of sneak around to the right, so it shouldn't be too bad. He won't see you here, the Caramel Lango, so we can make a save right here. And don't you Spanish Inquisition looking mother. Okay, don't call me a mouse. I'm a man. I'm a ten-year-old man. And it was at this point as well, I learned, oh wait, I can turn the brightness all the way up. So I did mention it a few times, so hopefully you guys done that at the beginning to make it a little bit easier for yourself. Oh, now then, this room can be a bit of a pain. So we've got to stay, go exactly where I go. There's an enemy behind the curtain, so he will get you if you are too close to him. In this room, there are invisible traps and visible candles. So we need to see the blood spatters on the floor there. Obviously, don't go with them because you will get hit and you will lose a bit of health. So we need to um, smash out three levers here so what you need to do then just go where i go we're on the sort of right hand side there is an enemy in this room as well so he obviously will be trying to get you as well if he does try to get you just boot it to the other side of the room and you should be safe from harm um there are three levers on the back wall here that second one will get uh, activate the trap so you know exactly where they are and the third one We'll activate the candles, which we need to burn to get the kobold's letter in the next um, 
You see just on the floor right there, we've already lit up two candles. So that is where the treasure chest will appear for us. So now it's just a case of avoiding the enemy and lighting up all the candles. So just follow the path I do for the moment. So if the enemy does catch you then, obviously just hold down on your left directional stick or the opposite direction of where he's sucking you up from. It is as easy as that, and with that, again, obviously just boot it away. Now, if there's any candles that are on any traps, inch very, very carefully towards it, because you end up doing what I do there and getting hit. And it's the same one with this one at the top, so I'll have to eat some bread, get some carbs in me to um, health myself up. So when all six candles are lit, then go into the middle of the room, and then... <laughs> very stupid there. Yeah, once all uh, six candles are lit, go into the middle of the room, get the um, chest, but surprise, surprise, there's nothing in it, so we've been duped. But now with this point, we can just exit the room, hopefully avoiding the enemy like I didn't do right here. So again, you're just holding, that, um, holding the opposite direction on the uh, directional stick if the enemy tries to catch you. So with that, then you can just sort of avoid him and now exit this room. So now we're finally out of that room. Now that did take me a few attempts to do, I will be honest. Uh, now we can just head back down towards where the three cannons are here to meet our friend Guliana Ghoulies again. <laughs> So here's some interesting things then, we've got a paper note with some numbers on it and everything. I don't know why Ghoulie couldn't have just told us that earlier on, but there we go. So when you go ahead and equip it right now, it's in this box right in front of the fountain. And what we'll also be doing is finally buying something from the merchant, getting the coin there for another achievement later on. So equip your coin, don't make a save yet, we're coming close to it but not yet. So just go ahead and grab a handful of corn. And then what we need to do then is talk to Eisben. And basically what, what Eisben has is the letter, which we need. But what he wants you to do is kill the old lady, which, I mean, he does get beaten a lot. So, very understandable. Now we can save the game right here. And basically why we're saving the game here is because we're going to be getting three achievements. And that involves killing the old lady, then killing Eisben, then killing both of them. But obviously we want to, we'd prefer to do the game without killing anybody. So go ahead and talk to the shepherd on the right hand side. You either touch the goat on the left or the goat on the right and that kills either one. So we'll go ahead, talk to the goat on the right first, then just nip into the right room. Then you'll hear like a scream. <laughs> and that obviously sounds like I've been dead. I mean... This isn't just, uh, you know, oh, we'll, we'll just chuck him, bury him away somewhere. That's like, I've just sliced you up to death. And that's not even a decent bit of bacon there, which is tamping. So, <laughs> yeah. So once that achievement unlocks, go ahead, reload your save, talk to the shepherd again. This time, of course, we'll be talking to the goat on the left, which will kill the old lady. Again, do the same thing, just... Go into the right room. This time you don't hear anything, but you can just nip straight back out. You don't have to wait for anything at all. And, oh, another bit of decapitation right there. <laughs> and that is just as, that blood fountain is just as glorious as the water fountain there. With a the raven on it. So, fair dues. Top graphics, that. Reload your save again. I will be doing the exact same thing, only this time we're talking to the goat on the left and the goat on the right. That kills them both, and then afterwards you can simply just reload your save and carry on as normal.
Ah, there we go then, guys. Just thought I'd give you a break for two minutes from my voice. <laughs> so anyway, Ghoulies needs a book from the library. Now, that wouldn't be too bad, except there is a monster, basically, where the book is, and I don't think there's any other way to get there. Be aware there are two monsters in this room, but what you'll need to do then, stick very close to this wall right here, and as soon as you get up to the book, spam the A button, or X button, or PlayStation, just to grab the book really quickly, and then whatever way he is trying to suck you up, obviously do it in the opposite direction. So for me, he luckily missed me the first time, but I managed to get away with it. So if he tries sucking you up, and again, almost got caught by that monster. But if that one monster tries sucking you up from where you got the book, obviously just push it in the opposite direction, or just keep pushing down, and you should be able to get away with it then. But with that being said, we can now go back to Ghoulies, give her the library book. And from here, head to the right again, but what we'll be doing, we're not going back into that room, thank God. But there's an enemy just up here that we need to sort of lure away, because we need to come through this door a little bit later on. But if he's directly in front of you, he's going to kill you. So, all you need to do then, he's just on the right hand side here. And just, you know, as long as you're not too close to him, so you can't get munched up to death. This should be good, but just lure him away, just sort of around this corner right here, and th that's where he'll stay then, so you should have no problems later on. God, I'm full of good advice, ain't I? And if you think you've got it sort of enough, like I said, he shouldn't now be at the door that we need to enter a little bit later on, so that's good. Now we can head on and exit. Like I said, it's just a lot of back and forth in this game, isn't it? Grabbing keys and it's back and forth. But, I hope you're enjoying it so far. I certainly was. Or am, still, even. So, in the right room. Bottom right, the one with the treasure chest in it. And what we will be doing is getting the corn. Putting the corn down. Don't actually put it in the chest, because <laughs> for about two minutes, I was wondering why nothing was happening. you got to put the corn down just before the chest. And that'll set up the trap for Eisbin. So, now we go back to the human pig-like alive creature. Tell him there's some corn, uh, what we'll be doing is basically getting another achievement and trapping him. So I've been chewing that, lovely jubbly. Good thing he's not scared of the, uh, <laughs> piss scared of the dark, mind, isn't it? Go to the ladder behind him, pull the lever down, and then that should actually trap him. And now we've got him right where we want him, because now we can get the letter out of him. You can let him out if you want to, or you can just leave him in there. Literally nothing happens, so I'm just an evil son of a bitch, and just leave him in there. I mean, he's got some corn, and he can piss and poop where he wants, so he's a happy pig. And the old lady will find him anyway, if she really wants to. So now head down south a little bit, go to that treasure chest on the right, and we'll be opening it with the note that we got from Ghoulies a little bit earlier on, the one with 888 on it. So now we can use that, and we'll get a butterfly net. And you think, why is that going to come in handy? Well, it funnily enough does. Plus, obviously, of course, this unlocks another achievement for opening the chest as well. And obviously, equip a candle here, and... Nope. Oh yeah, sorry, so there is a monster there, but because the candles get put down, uh, he obviously won't go, he won't stray any farther from there, so go ahead, show Ghoulies the butterfly net first.
So congratulations, you think? You think, right, we've got his name, we're all job done, game's close. Sort of, sort of. We are getting close to the end, but there's one more sort of small area that we've got to get through first. But for this bit, we have to spell out his name. This can take just a few minutes. His name is Patronio, which just reminds me of uh, Futurama for... For whatever reason, Animatronio. If anyone knows Futurama and knows Animatronio, this is exactly what it reminded me of for some reason. So just go, uh, go ahead, spell out his name, pushing the um, block letters onto the correct bits, and then you should just be good to go. And then <laughs> a surprise happens, obviously. So this is it then, congratulations, we are completely done. And you're going to have a little conversation with Anna Petronio. <laughs> I'm clever. And, oh wait, look at this. Oh, oh, isn't this a shock in a video game? We are close to the end, and then we get messed about. Oh, surprise, surprise, woe is friggin' me. And in all fairness, this is only a short area anyway, but it was definitely my least favourite part of the game, to be honest. Still good, still fun, did still enjoy it, but out of the entire game, not the best bit. See those little worms right there? Avoid them if you can, because they do hurt. They will take some life off you, and obviously if you've... If you, uh... Running out with a bit of food, you know, it's pretty vital you don't get hit by them anyway. So, push either one, depends where your worm is. <laughs> um, push one of them out of the way, go to the left. This can be a little bit of a. Now, there's blood splattered chests all around. Do not open those because there is a spike inside. And oh, who's this guy you wonder with his legs blown off? And he's still going strong. Oh my god, it's Jeff! Jeff is here, the guy's notes that we've been picking up all throughout this game through treasure chest. Jeff is here, and he is basically dying, but, I mean, that's a lot of blood. I mean, that is a lot of blood. Get a couple of portions of bread from that treasure chest and save the game right here. And like I said, the, the blood squirting um, physics in this game are truly sensational, and <laughs> I really enjoy the amount of gore and blood that is in it. So this is it then, we are coming up close now. There's only two types of enemies down here, the little worms that can hurt you, and some big ass worm 
bitch boys, which are kind of a bitch, but they're, again, not too bad. So like I said, bloody treasure chests, leave them the hell alone, because they will spike you and mess you up. And so you go to the left, you'll see this big, massive worm. They can't kill you in one hit, but they can kill you pretty quickly, so it's best to just sort of avoid him. This one you can avoid for now, he's fine. And go up towards the right, there's a door we'll be needing to go through up here. Again, leave the treasure chest <laughs> if you don't want a surprise. Uh, this worm will bite you anyway, this will happen, so he's basically your friend now, even though uh, nobody really wants a worm for a friend. Unless your penis size is really small. Um, anyway, <laughs> go with, you know what to do with this fire bit, wait until it um, nips off and then we'll need to go to the right. This is, this is unavoidable right here. Um, the spikes will get you, so that bit's unavoidable. Um, smash the lever down, that will help us. There's a gate just up there, push the box out of the way. Now be careful, there is a worm up here, right there, which patrols going up and down. And of course, be careful not to get <laughs> injured by the spikes again. So this worm is a son of a bitch. Like I said, he can't kill you in one hit, but he can kill you pretty quickly. So just wait until he comes down here. He will go back up eventually and sort of do a, a guard patrol thing, even though it's like a massive worm with a hell of an ass on him. I don't know why he needs to do a patrol. Let's just keep waiting, keep waiting. And by this point, as long as he's not looking directly at you, you should be good to go. So... Spikes on the walls on the left and on the right, so be careful of them there. Again, no need to rush. Take your time, because it's annoying. To, oh, this part can be annoying. Spikes on the wall up there. The worm will go all the way up, so we'll just take a left little bit of a detour here. There's nothing else here. We don't need to come to this area. We're just waiting for that booty to nip back on past. And go ahead and open up a lever. Just up, up top there. So lucky for us, we don't need to go back the way we came. You can just wait for that worm to go off to the right and the flames have now stopped. And we'll be grabbing this sort of amulet looking thing right here. Let's go ahead and grab it. Oh, golden emblem, sorry, not amulet. I mean, it's all the same thing in video games. You all do the same thing, don't they? Watch out for the worms, of course. Make sure not to get, they only pinch a little bit. But there is two worms in this room right here and one of them gets me, you've got to be careful. He just absolutely munched me almost to death there, so be very careful with that. If he is there, just wait. He does walk away, so just wait until he goes away. This one, as long as you're not in front of him, you should be good to go, so now we'll be heading back towards Jeff. But before we do that, actually, with the golden emblem we've got, there is a door right here, which we will need to put that emblem in, and that will open up basically our escape room but we need to get a few more items to escape yet It's almost seeming like Jack and the Beanstalk fairy tale stuff, this. So he gives you a magic bean, does Jeff. Go ahead and plant that, but we need water. There is no water in the dungeon, but basically a bucket of blood will do. So now that will be our next destination. Again, always remember, you know, we are coming close to the end, so if you have got a bit of spare food to eat, always remember to sort of top up as much as health as you can. I mean, I have five portions of bread, so you should be good to go at this point, providing you get past the big bitch boy worms cleanly enough. So this time we're going back the same way, but this time we're going to a door on the left. Don't worry about this worm again. Just sort of stick to the left-hand 
edge side walls as much as he can. Obviously keeping an eye out for the other big worm and obviously avoiding all the little worms. So now then, this is where we'll be getting the big bucket of blood. Hans' house is here for some reason, which is just, you know, creepy in real life, but... <laughs> and the bucket is just underneath this well here, so... Hey! Blood, water, it all does the same thing, doesn't it? It all tastes the same, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I'm just joking, of course. That's vampires and stuff. So the worm basically says now, I want some sweets, so we'll be getting an achievement for feeding this worm a little bit later on. But for now we'll be going back exactly the same room we came, the one with the Jack and the Beanstalk Beanstalk. Nothing happens, or does it? So as it turned out then, yes it did, and that is our way out of here. So now let's go and talk to Juff, except this time, uh, Juff is dead. I'm not surprised with that squirting blood loss. That finally, finally ended his life. So now then, we can now save the game at this point because we'll be coming back to this point a couple of times to start basically the five endings. So we are getting close to that point now. We're basically at the end of the game now. Um, but obviously it's going to take a little bit to get to those five endings, as we said. So for now then, head back up to the Beanie Boy climb up and then we are finally out of there. So here we go then, ending 1 out of 5 is coming up now, and you will <laughs> notice something very familiar. Like these monsters, the ones that tried killing you, and the red caramel lengo there, and you're wondering what the hell's going on. Look, honestly, have a look through the dialogue at this point, because you'll sort of uh, be surprised and you'll be, you know, if you've been following the dialogue all along and you've been looking at the story, you'll be very surprised, but um, for this particular ending, all you have to do then is just go ahead and sit on the throne right there and that's it ending one out of five done nice and easy to start off with but yeah as i said it's definitely worth having a look through the dialogue having a look through the story because it's it, it's been fantastic throughout the entire game to be honest but some of these endings the way they end is very surprising and absolutely excellent so load up your game then on uh, back to the depths where we were a little bit earlier on and basically what we'll be doing then is the exact same thing as we just did for ending 1 out of 5, only this time, before you sit on the throne, you make sure to put on your snake ring. Equip the snake ring, which we have done, I think, once for the red light achievement a little bit earlier on. So when, you ask, when he asks you to sit down, put on the ring, and something hilarious will happen to him, and that will be the second ending out of 5.
Yeah, so they were pretty decent endings, were they not? You know, the, the Count blows up spectacularly and you were rich as hell. Well, that's my type of ending, personally, but uh, there we go. So continue, again, we'll be back down in the depths. We'll be going through the exact same thing. Only this time, we're not sitting on the throne or blowing up the Count. Basically, you can push the throne out of the way and there's a trap door behind him and we'll end up at our... Well, I won't spoil it, but we'll end up in a graveyard, basically like we were at the beginning of the game, and we'll be travelling all the way back home. The endings get even, uh, you know, a bit cuter and a bit happier towards the end, rather than deadly and making yourself rich. Although I do like making myself rich. So there we go then, spoiler, spoiler, it's your dad's graveyard, okay, there he is, your dad's, your dad's gone, sorry, but um, you won't be able to see him in the game, well I suppose you just did, um, anyway with this ending then, all we're doing is taking a nice little walk back, it's a nice peaceful day, these kind of endings, you know what I'm happy with in games where you've had a, you've had a good time, you've you've stealth, you've killed some monsters, you've gotten the way with a load of stuff, and sometimes it's just nice to think you know what I've got a couple of endings to do, and all it is is just going for a little walk, doing an extra couple of things, without the stress. You've had all the stress, you've been there, you've worn the t-shirt through the game, so isn't it nice to just relax, chill out, go past this guy? fixing his cart and everything's back to normal it's just it's just so nice it's just so nice and here's your dog who you haven't seen all game you fed him the bone at the beginning and then you left because you were 10 years old and you thought you were better than your mother let me tell you now you could be 50 and you'll never know better than your mother that's i'm 30 and my mother is well she's always right so <laughs> anyway I know it's hard to admit, but they always are. Anyway, sad times coming up. Oh, the merchant hung himself. That's that's also unfortunate. But uh, you know, he was a bit of a bit of a douche throughout the game, so we're not we're not entirely uh, disappointed about that. Now, once we do get to our house, you should, if you've been following the guide, you should have still a couple of apples on you because we'll be feeding for the very last time the donkey another apple only this time he doesn't crap uh, um, gold and turn into a unicorn but you will of course get an achievement for it there's the old lady then this time without eyes bin because of course um, uh, <laughs> you know we left him in the cage in the <laughs> alternate world or was it all just a dream maybe she beat him to death and fried him Potentially. Anyway, so there you go. There's the guys and the gals, the excellent guys and gals that worked on this magnificent game. And now we are, here we are then, back home, finally. Go past the well, and like I said, before you go into your house this time, there's the donkey, and just feed him another apple. For some reason, I fed him all three. It makes no difference if you do or don't, because as soon as you get this next ending, we will be... Obviously continuing from the dungeon once again.
Right then, so go ahead, reload your save from the depths of the castle once again. <clears throat> and this time, instead of going straight up old Jack and the Beanie Boy Beanstalk, we'll be continuing it on left. Now, instead of the big worms, there's no enemies at this point now, so instead of the big worms that try to eat you, there's just, um, well, you'll see. Some extreme, some extreme Satanism stuff going on right here. So you still got the little worms, obviously, you can avoid them if you want, but it doesn't matter if you do get hit, you should have enough stuff anyway. And we're going for, um, stuff to eat, I mean, for your health, and actually go into your house this time, which you should have Jeff's key. Now, your mother's in bed, she's dying or something, not really, but what you have to do for two achievements here, equip, <laughs> get your worm out, <laughs> That means two things. Put him on the cake, and the worm will eat the cake. He will also then turn into a butterfly, and obviously we've got the butterfly net from earlier on, so this is where it comes in handy. So you'll get the achievement for the worm, your, your worm eating sweets. Stop feeding your worm sweets, guys. It's not good for it. And just in the next area, then, get your butterfly net out and go ahead, just catch the butterfly. And then we can go back up to Jack and the Beanie Boy and get ending number four. So it's the same as the last end and then we're just going to go straight back outside to so push the throne out of the way and then head on straight back outside. Now it'll be the same sort of path, well there's only really one path you can take outside. Um, but you remember where we went at the beginning of the game where we first seen uh, Julie or Giuli or whatever you want to call her? That's where we'll be heading and we'll be finding a little secret treasure room thanks to the count right there. So. Keep following the path and I'll obviously let you know when the time is coming up. So we'll grab all the riches and that'll basically be the fourth ending out of five. So from this point then head up instead of going straight to the left. This is where the raven was at the very beginning of the game, quite close to the donkey. And this is where we've seen Guli Biuli. 
And is that a pig looks like a goat when he's eating for some reason? But that's another pig anyway. See this grate on the left? Equip your crowbar, smash this grate out of the way, and we just gotta follow this tiny, tiny little tunnel. Obviously, equip the candle. There's no need to really. There's only one pathway to go here. Um, up to the top, and you think now this should obviously again if you've been following the game following the guide perfectly you should have this butterfly jewel um, which of course you would have got if you caught the butterfly so you should have that jewel able enough to open this door um, if you don't have it I'm terribly sorry but you're gonna have to reload a little bit of an earlier save not too far though but when you're in this room you think is something going to happen um, no, no it's not. You, ju you can just take all the treasure you want and go home. Apart from, apparently I'm a bit cack handed and I was placing candles instead of actually picking up the treasure. So with that then you got jewels and coins and all types of crap to be rich forever with. I wish it was that easy mind to find 200 gold coins lying about, but you know, I'm happy with no money. Um, here's Guliana anyway. And um, basically we're going to get another achievement here for the uh, being a master treasure hunter basically. So like I said, you've been following the game, you're following the guide, you should get the exact same thing as I'm getting here. You are just the top dog now. So now it's just a simple case of walking on by, walking on home, just enjoying the ending. Like we've done for the last couple, well the last one, now it's just time to enjoy it again. Go all the way home. There's no donkey this time. Well, I mean, turns out there is a donkey, but what I meant was you don't have to do anything with him this time, obviously. Yeah, you, you know what I meant. So you can forget the donkey this time and just head on home, boy. Show your mother them riches, yo. Right then, so we're loading up the save again, and basically what we're doing is the exact, exact same thing as we did last time, except when you get to where the count is, this time you have to use the snake ring to blow him up. And that's the only difference. So we're still going to get the... So if you didn't manage to get the achievement last time somehow, even though you really should have, um, we're going to make the worm eat the cake, catch him when he turns into a butterfly, go up, to where the count is, put the snake ring on, blow him up, take the same path as we did last time, so to the treasure room as well, so we'll be getting all the treasure and things like that, and that will be your fifth and final end, and then we've only got two achievements left to do! Woohoo! We're almost there! 
And it's funny that getting these five endings is sort of taking uh, about just as half as long as the actual game itself. But, you know, like I said, it's a nice de-stressing time. You know, it's a nice de-stressing sort of half hour of gameplay. So you can't complain, can you? Just remember to put your snake ring on here just to blow up the count and then we can leave and again go and find the treasure etc like we did in the exact same last ending and I won't be talking through this one I'll let you enjoy it without my um, I mean obviously I know I've got a beautiful voice but you know I'll leave you just <laughs> enjoy the piece for a moment
So then, congratulations, that's all five endings done. Now what we need to do is very quickly start a new game, um, and then we'll just need to reload one of our saves a little from a little bit earlier on for these final two achievements. Now, what we'll basically need to be doing for this, we didn't get this far at the beginning of the game, but remember at the start we ended up talking to the shepherd, having some wine, and, you know, he got us... He basically took advantage of us, which, being a ten-year-old boy... I don't know, that's paedophilia in my book. Um, uh, yeah, so, <coughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah, so we didn't actually go any further than that, of course, if you remember, but this time what we'll be doing is just ignoring everyone and going to where the graveyard is, which we obviously didn't get to in the very beginning of our normal new game save. So, once you, get, you, once you see the shepherd, just go past him, keep going straight up, and that's where the graveyard is, and that is where you will get your second to last achievement.
yeah, just keep being a dick, keep ignoring everyone, because they all suck you into a stupid alternate world anyway. Look at it, how cute your little ducks and little ponds and stuff. And up to your father's grave, right at the very top here. And then basically, well, you get mashed up. <laughs> you just got fudged up, son, by a raven. How tamping are you? So anyway, that's that one done. And now what we need to do, we need to now load up a specific save. And I say specific because we need to basically learn the um, kobold's name without doing all the letters and things. And there is a very particular way to do this. So we need to start... For the first bit, on the clock, it needs to be before half past three. If it's after half past three, it will not work. So go and load up. By now, you should have chapter... It should be number nine. That's And you should have ten coins right there. And now we can go and get the key from the merchant. And as you see there, it says five past three, which is perfect. It's exactly what we need. So if you do any other saves, if you have more coins, less coins, this achievement won't work. You will need exactly the ten coins and for it to be before half past three in the morning. So obviously follow exactly where I've gone just there, just in this little crawl space right here, and we've got this mirror. Now there's a... You know, it's going to take about five to six minutes. It's a, it's a little bit more complicated than the most of the achievements that we've gotten so far, but it's not really too bad in all fairness. So we'll just walk up to the right here. We'll be going up these stairs. Now, this is a room that we didn't actually visit the first time going through the game, but it's a room that we'll be visiting two or three times. I think it's just twice, actually. Um, it's, I think it's just the kobold's bedroom. So go ahead, talk, um, get your mirror out, equip it, and use it on the mirror in the bedroom. So before you leave then, make sure to have a look at, at the desk drawers in the top left hand corner to get a gold coin, which we will need because we will be making a save right now, as we've got to get past just a couple of monsters, and it's just better that way instead of, you know, a bit less hassle saves a bit more time, doesn't it really? So let's get your candle out, we'll be going back down and making our save now. With that done then, I mean this area should be completely familiar to you by now, so we'll be heading to the left, going down, and always remember there is a monster here, if you remember, so obviously try to avoid him, as I don't do, because he sneaks up on me, that son of a bitch, faceless mother hacker, um, and he's just not going to leave, in fact I get lucky with this, I just, to be honest, I actually went to die, and then just do it again, but um, I ended up luckily just moving past him anyway, so Yeah, if he kills you obviously at that point, it's no problem because you obviously just made a save so you can just go there quickly anyway Into the library grabbing the ladder the monster should be gone at this point I don't know why he I mean he sees you go into the room So you think he'd either follow you or just wait for you, but that's why I love video game logic people That's why I love it. We'll be going straight ahead into the right room Just checking the time there, just to make because it's it's like a couple of instances and things that you've got to do um, to get the clock going forward a bit. So we'll be doing just one more thing, going through the right-hand door here, um, 
uh, pulling it pulling the lever and we'll just be opening up the treasure chest that's there's nothing in it it's just to move time forward just to have us three and then that's when we know we'll be good to go and this will be it this will this will be the last sort of bit of action in the game that we are basically going to do because all we've got to do now is go up go back into the bedroom uh, the Kobo's bedroom and just hide behind some curtains and that's it excellent and that'll be job done. So anyway, what did you think of the game then, guys and gals? Um, I, I gotta be honest, I really enjoyed it in the end. First, it took, it did take a little bit for me to get into personally. I didn't completely love it straight away, if, if I'm all honest. But the more I got into the game, I know it's only a short game, but, you know, the sort of, the more I got into it, I, the more I bloody loved it, so... Yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it as well, and hopefully you've enjoyed the um, enjoyed the guide and the walkthrough, and hopefully it's helped, and hoping that I've been clear and smooth, and you've enjoyed my weird sense of humour again, because we all know that I've got that. So yeah, just let me know how it goes. Um, for some reason, another little skip of a jump there, so basically you'll just need to head straight on into the curtains. Um, there'll be a little bit more dialogue than that. Again, don't know what happens. So sorry about that. So yeah, once you enter the room, there'll be a bit of dialogue. You just go straight up into the curtains, and he'll reveal his name. There it is, Petronio. So now you know. So now you can be like, hey, screw you, buddy. I already know. Anyway, that's it. That's it, guys and gals. Thank you so, so much for watching. Really hope this has helped. And if it has, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see you beauties in the next one. Big love.